All right, guys, welcome back. To Travis Jones Show. Trav, how you doing, man? Dude, I am, I'm really good, man. Like, I just had a workout. Anyone's looking at me on the screen, I'm a sweaty mess. Uh, we'll get into why I did that workout and why I look a sweaty mess right now. Um, we tried to do this podcast yesterday. There was cleaners in my office. Um, the, world, the world was against us. But, like, you know what? Like, I felt that maybe that was the obstacle telling us, do this on Friday. Yeah. So you can be chilled when you get into it. And um, let's inspire some people to, to have a great fucking life. Yeah, we had such an interesting chat yesterday in the po- uh, before the podcast was starting because we were just talking about just the way people are approaching their life like right now, but like I guess always as a default of just um, just not really that inspiring, right? Like it's just pretty, pretty fucking average. Um, and it motivated yeah. you to do an episode like this. Yeah, dude. And, and like this isn't me... Because I, I, I can be a confronting human being, right? Like, I, um, I'm not a big dude, um, but I am, like, slightly larger. I've got tattoos. Um, when I start, like, confronting people with, like, hey, you know, you need to have better dreams. They're like, hey, hold, hold on. I'm not telling you dreams are shit, okay? So everyone out there who has dreams right now, I'm not telling you dreams are shit. But what happens is most people take their past, okay? So they look at their past, everything that's happened in the past. It's like they haven't followed a nutrition plan or they haven't been able to get their leads working or they're really crappy at sales or they just haven't been able to make the money they want. So they take all their past failures and then all of a sudden when they start seeing goals for the future, they take all of that baggage that they have because it is baggage, right? And they take all this baggage and they take it into their current self right now, that person that they are as they're setting goals into the future. And then they set these goals based on their past failures because they don't want to set goals too high because then if they don't achieve them, then they will feel like a failure even again. And the problem is they set goals so low now that they, when they do achieve them, they still don't achieve greatness. And they have so much more potential in their life. And, you know, it's the trajectory, you know, it's, it's the trajectory of your life, moment to moment, over every single day, over the next five years, over the next 10 years. Like, fuck, like, RBT is not even 10 years old, dude. Yeah. If we're not, like... Crazy to think about. Yeah, man, like, you know, like... I think, like, I've been in the industry for 18 years. Um, and I've seen a lot of amazing trainers and a lot of friends that are amazing business owners. And all those ones um, who achieved what they want to achieve, like, set goals, not in the mediocre land that doesn't even inspire them. Because when we look at, like, flow, okay? So um, when we look at flow, when you set two goals too high, and your current skill level and the challenge, right? So if the challenge is too high to your current skill level, it pushes you out of flow. It's above flow and it's in anxiety. Anxiety pushes into procrastination. The problem is most people set goals too low now because they don't want to not achieve them because everyone will say they're a failure because we worry about what everyone thinks nowadays because of social media and all the rest of it. We, I want, we, we don't like the negativity from other people when you're really just going to tell everyone to fuck off right? It's your life. It's your goal. But when we set goals too low, when our skill is too high for the challenge, it leads into boredom and boredom also leads into procrastination. So to actually get ourselves in flow and me high chi sank me high is the guy who wrote, wrote the book flow. I got his name right for the first time just then, man. I feel very proud right now. It's impressive. You're in flow. <laughs> I know I am. I am. So what he says, you need to be 5% above your challenge. All right. So it's like, if you're a current trajectory at the moment next year, it's like, okay, cool. I have got like, um, you know, I've got a hundred members in my business. Okay, cool. Next month I want 105. Next month after I want, you know, 5% more. I want 5% more. And you keep going 5%. It's not 5% now to 12 months. Like go 5% every month because you're, you're, you're growing. And that 5% starts to um, compound because the 5% on 150 is different to 5% on a hundred. Right. And you, you're constantly growing. You're constantly stepping outside your comfort zone. And with this, when these goals are outside your comfort zone, that's when you actually are asked to show up in the world. Okay? You can't take a day off. You don't get that bad about yourself. You don't step back and retreat into safety. Um, so it's like, make sure your goals are worth it. Mm. Like, that's the biggest thing. It's like, does, do, when you look at that, does that actually inspire you? Because if it doesn't inspire you, man, like you, know, you can put your goals through the motivation equation, right? Like motivation equals value times expectancy over impulsivity times delay. Okay. Like very simple. <laughs> so when we look at this, uh, Piers still wrote the book, the motivation equation. I think it was like the procrastination equation. Maybe. Um, 
when when he looks at his motivation equals uh, your your value, your why. Like, what is your why? Like, mm. why do you want 150 members? Oh, I just want to be a baller and have a Ferrari. It's like, dude, that's a shit why. You'll never get there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's get it. Get an actual why. Something that's like it, it burns you up inside. You wake up, you jump out of bed, you're like I'm taking on the day. Okay. So it's like you have to have that why, and then you have to have an expectancy. Okay. So. Dude, this is the exact reason why people come to coach with us, okay? And this is not me po- pushing the coaching right now, but I tell this to my, um, when we're doing motivation equation for fat loss, right? Mm. So what, what's, if you have an, ex- okay, why don't I do my diet and nutrition by myself most of the time? Because I have a very low expectancy. And if I have a low expectancy, I don't have motivation because oh, I've tried all this lemon detoxes and skinny teas and shit in the past and I haven't got my result. So because my expectancy is low, my vote motivation starts and it declines. The reason why you get a coach is they've got people results that you want to get. And just by having a coach who's got results that you want to get, your expectancy goes up because you believe you can achieve what their clients have achieved. Yeah. So it's like, bang, expectancy goes up. You have a high, huge why. And it's like, if you can go one to 10 um, on your why and one to 10 on your expectancy, and if it's like eight or nine or 10, they have to both be up there. Mm. Otherwise, your motivation waver. Like, what about the motivation for like an Olympic... Um, medalist right like someone's going to olympics the delayed gratification on that is like four years mm. They're training every day balls to the wall for four years you have to have a crazy expectancy right you don't go and go you know what man like i'm going to go to the olympics i'm going to get my ass kicked i can't wait for four years to lose like they just don't think like that yeah. they think that their winning is the only option okay and they change their env- they mold their environment to have a higher expectancy right? That's what they do. They get a coach to have a higher expectancy. You need to do everything you can in the world to get the highest possible expectancy you can to have that like 10 out of 10. And then you look at the impulsivity and delay. So when we look at um, impulsivity for business owners, dude, like I'm going to go play on fucking Instagram, right? I'm going to scroll social media. I'm going to watch Joe Rogan on Spotify now. (laughs) Like uh, it's told a hundred million dollar deals. No more Joe Rogan show on YouTube. Um, but like with this, you know, like you procrastinate in knowledge consumption so much. Okay. And then don't go into action. It's like, write All the things that you're procrastinating it down and what you should actually be doing, probably picking up the phone, making a sale, probably picking up the phone, calling a member, probably mm-hmm. like, you know, like doing some customer experience. Like, like you need, you can have that time. Okay. Where you go on social media, but you need to schedule it. It can't be like you just grabbing your phone every two seconds because you are in the boredom part of flow, okay? So if you're in boredom, impulsivity kicks in, too behind. That's why this, this uh, motivation equation is so crucial. So what can you do to decrease impulsivity? Put your phone in another room. Have time blocks. Have deep work blocks. Have structure for your day. Have goals that actually makes you step outside your goal comfort zone. And then, so you need to have that low. And then you need to have the delay low as well. So delay, it's like, oh, I'm going to have 150 members in 12 months. And all of a sudden, Parkinson's law kicks in, right? Everyone's ever had a test they had to study for. And they had this test like four weeks away. And they waited till the last night to study for the test, right? Because they, everyone leaves shit to the last possible minute. Everyone had a client who wanted to lose weight in 12 weeks, right? Like, I want to lose 10 kilos in 12 weeks. And then like, they go really well for the first week. And then two, three, four, five weeks in, they sabotage themselves. It's like, ah, oh, still, I've still got six weeks to go. I've still got five weeks to go. And there's like one week left and they're trying to starve themselves to lose it, right? Like people wait to the last minute to achieve shit. So you need to decrease the delay as much as possible to a 30 day basis. Let's say, cool, I want 150 members in you know, 12 months. Okay, I need to get to 80 members, okay, in one month. And then I need to get to 90 members in two months. So you have these short delay cycles. So this keeps your motivation high and you get rewards as you hit these little short delays. And if you can do this, if you're going to keep the delay super low, keep impulsivity super low, motivation super high, then we can actually get there. Mm. Okay. And that's like motivation, dude. Like no one's motivated right now because there's so much uncertainty. They're like, what happens? Like, dude, like you can only control yourself. Like, I, be, I the thing I like the best. Okay, Ugh. I feel like I'm so pumped up right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, I just had the. It's hardest, good. I'm loving it. I just had the hardest workout with time. I felt like I was about to die. It was like for 55 minutes, 25. We went through this like chipper workout. Like, 
<laughs> uh, I literally thought I was going to die, but I had sort of like a couple of hundred milligrams. But isn't like, that's such a good thing like to bring up? It's because like everything you're talking about with regards to goal setting is like, you can, you got two choices. You can like wake up each day and just like let your state and energy just flow the way it goes and you'll feel unmotivated. You feel procrastinated and like you feel like shit or you can like feel fucking awesome and feel like bulletproof, right? And it's like, it's so easy to fall back into that state of like, just, oh, I just, I just don't feel that good at the moment. I just, I'm just procrastinating, blah, blah, blah. It's just like, well, there's things you can do to fucking change that. Like go fucking do a real fucking hard workout. Oh man, a hundred percent. Like, and I think the pe- what happens when people move into this uncertainty, and this is a hundred percent what we were talking about yesterday, right? Like right now is the, probably the most uncertain time you'll ever have in your life ever. The, this I hope never happens again to anyone's lives who are alive right now, mm-hmm. because like, you know, this hasn't rocked the world before we ever seeing something brand new. So we haven't been ready for it. We haven't been prepared for it. Like you had complete certainty. Okay, in the past, you had so certainty that you were making money, or you certainty that you weren't making money, or you had certainty that you believe you could make money. Okay, either way, you were like, I can do this, okay, or I can't do this, whatever the certainty you had. And all of a sudden, something outside of your control, and a lot of people listening to this are guys, and guys like 20 to 35 are certainty driven people as far as one of their human needs. And when you, when someone outside of your control for the first time in your life rips certainty out of your life, you go, holy shit. Like I'm not actually in control. Like something external can rock my world. And when someone takes away one of your human needs without you wanting that to happen, they shift into uncertainty. They shift into these low lulls. Like I felt it as well, man. But I'm fortunate enough to be able to know when I'm down and what gets me up. Mm. I, I personally have a conscious awareness of it. Okay. Like I've been through some uncertain times in my, in my life. Um, so with this, like, because I've been through other uncertain times for me, you know, like having injured cockle, I fly line four times, I lost a football career, like I've been through VA, like I've been through some shit, like I've, like I've learned, known how to get myself on track and how to perform with the most energy. I think for everyone else out there, if you haven't been through some form of uncertainty, like what you're currently going through, it's like, oh, you default back into a lesser version of you, okay? So this is why you need to have a default version of you that is still good. Okay. So what are your default habits? Because right now, like your time management out the window, most people aren't running sessions. Okay. So they're taking like three hours to do a half hour task. Okay. So like, I want you to think about it. It's like, you need to manage your energy so, so carefully right now. It's not time management, it's energy management. Okay. So, okay, cool. What's going to get my energy, my focus, my routine on point. Okay, cool. I got some fundamentals I need to still, I need to stick to, even though I can sleep, stay up later and sleep in more. I'm not going to seven hours of sleep just because like, I can't train in the gym. If you can't, it's like, I'm still going to train every single day. Just because like, I'm going to make time for meditation because focus is so crucial, crucial right now. And also it helps with my impulsivity. Like I'm going to still stick to my nutrition plan because dude, I'm in the fitness industry. You have to be an inspiration. Like, unfortunately that's the industry you chose. Yeah. Okay. Just like financial planners can't be broke as fuck. Like you chose it. You can't, you have to be some form of representative of the health and fitness industry. Okay. This is the truth. So it's like, cool. I need to be inspirational. I need to be motivational for my clients that I still have. I need to show them that in uncertain times that I don't crack because I'm trying to tell them not to crack. So I can't be a hypocrite. Okay. So I'm like, I've got these five fundamentals. These are my default. Worst case scenario, I'll meditate five minutes, I sleep seven hours, I train 20 minutes, I hit my calories within 10% or 20%. Like, you know, like I have these defaults. Like best case, I could train for longer. I meditate for longer, I sleep for longer. But my default me, even if I don't want to do it, I do this because I need energy. Like I, I need to be me. And every day you don't go to do your default is a day well, you're not going to your best you. And I think this is something that people don't actually think about as well. It's like, if you can wave a wand, dude, wave a wand in a year from now, what's the best you? And like, what do you mean? It's like, okay, cool. Let's wave a wand on your energy. Okay. On your health, right? Wave a wand. What's the best you? Let's wave a wand on your business. What's the best you? And they're like, oh, but there's so much uncertainty. It's like, dude, I don't give a fuck. I don't like stop telling, stop being a victim. Yeah. Stop being a victim right now. Okay, because like for me, like, I, I, I help people break through glass ceilings. 
okay? I don't care if I'll make you money online. I don't care if I'll make you lose weight and you've never lost it before. Like, I don't care. Like, we could open four gyms in the next year. Like, you could. If you wanted to, someone yeah. could come in and financially back you because you're positive and inspirational and you have a plan. Like, dude, like, COVID's not going for the next year. It might be the next month, two months, three months. You'll come out of this. You can accelerate growth. You could grow an online business. You can have certainty if you have certainty in yourself. Okay? So I think that's one of the biggest things. How do we get certainty in ourselves? We set some goals. Okay? We have strong identities. We have strong virtues or values we stick to. Okay? And then that doesn't mean you're always going to hit those goals. Um, but I'll come to that in a second. So with this, I want you to wave a wand with your health. Like what's the, if I could give you a wish, like one to two wishes in 12 months from now, like what would it be? Like write that down. If I give you a wish from 12 months from now, like one to two business things, like what would that be? And then in your health and your, your relationships, your love, like one to two wishes, like what would that be? Like you write those down and you're like, okay, cool. Motivation equation. Let's put that through the motivation equation. Okay. And then I'm going to put it through the whoop. Okay. So this is my wish. What's my outcome? Okay, cool. My wish is I'm going to have 180 members in 12 months from now. Cool. That's my wish. And because of that 180 members, I'm going to be doing like $12,000 a week. I'm going to do like 50,000 a month in debits. Cool. Now, this is my wish. What's the outcome? So my outcomes are I'm going to feel confident. Outcomes of that, I'm going to like, I'm going to feel like I'm, I feel good in my business. I feel happy. My stress is down. So wish is what you want. The outcomes is how you feel from that. Okay, mm -hmm. then the obstacles, the obstacle, you have to write down all the obstacles because this is so crucial because obstacles are where you rub your dreams up against reality. And there's been studies around this, how to make it more, um, they make it easier to come to fruition. Okay, you write down your obstacles. Okay, obstacle could be marketing. Your obstacle could be a pandemic. The obstacles could be so many things, right? You could do, but again, I didn't say 180 members offline. I said mm -hmm. 180 members. Okay, so you might have 180 members online. You just pivot, pivot. Pivot, state story strategy. You just keep changing the strategy until you hit the goal, right? So then you go, cool, what's the plan to overcome the obstacle? So you write down all the obstacles. The obstacle one could be you, like with a shitty ass state and low energy, mm. okay? And it's like, what's the plan to overcome that? You write that down. So you're going to do that for your health goals. You're going to do that for your work goals. You're going to do that for your relationship goals. It's like, cool, I feel good now. Okay, now how do I need to show up each day? Because now I've got these, I can go into the whole stoic philosophy, which is what I, man, this is the, the best thing I take from the stoic philosophy, and I might even get this wrong. The best thing I take from this is we're an archer. And if I can structure my day, okay, because I know how I need to live. I know the virtues I live with. I have my structure because I have my goals. And because I have my goals, I have behaviors. If I want to lose weight, it's like, cool, got to train, got to meditate, got to um, eat my nutrition. I'm going to have my meal structured in. I want to grow my business call. I need to do my marketing. I need to do my sales calls. I need to do my sessions. I need to do my team meetings. That's structured in. I want to have love life, my family life. I'm going to structure in my playtime. So my diet, 5 a.m. to 10 p.m., booked out. Perfect. Okay. Now I have structure to my life to achieve my goals, okay, and to live with my virtues, and I can live the best version of me. And once I have structure, I pretend I'm that archer, right? The bullseye is my day. I pull back the bow. I let go of the arrow. And I try and hit that bullseye straight on my day where I crush everything to the T. That's all you got to do every day. Mm. Now, what do you have control over? Your emotions and your effort, energy and effort. That's all you can control. Energy and effort or attitude and effort, right? That does, so something out of, out of your control might come down, smash your arrow to the ground. Okay. Like, dude, that's just an obstacle. That's just an obstacle. Like bring it. You know what? Obstacles, like for me, like I'm anti-fragile. I'm not fragile. When you hit me, I get stronger. That's the difference. I'm anti-fragile. Go read the book, okay? <laughs> like you need, that should be your virtue, anti-fragility. That is a virtue that all of us must have in business because shit's going to hit you in the face, okay? And that's what Mike Tyson says, right? Everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the motherfucking face. But for you, you get punched in the face. Like, yeah, bring it on. Like, I'm going to get stronger. I'm going to learn from this. I'm going to come back greater. And if you can go there, I'm going to pull that arrow back and I'm going to pull that bow back and I shoot that arrow. And if obstacles push me down, I go, cool. I learn. Didn't see that coming. What can I learn from this? How can I be better tomorrow? Next day, 
pull that bow back, shoot that arrow. It got knocked down by something else. Oh, what happened there? Zuckerberg turned my ads off. What happened? I gotta learn. I get stronger. And every single day you keep going and you keep going and keep going. This is how confidence builds. Mm. This is the opposite of anxiety. This is the opposite of self-doubt. You get confident, you get stronger. You're like, fuck dude, like bring me obstacles. Bring me uncertainty. It's like, this is like, you are literally like um, Marcus Aurelius, Aurelius on Gladius. Like, are you not entertained? It's like at obstacles. Because every time they come at you, you're like, dude, come on. Is that all you got? Like an obstacle, you start, you just like start talking to yourself. Obstacle comes at you, you're like, is that all you got for me today? Like, I've got you. You don't stress me. You make me stronger. Like, and if you can act like that, man, infinite potential. Because you're going to get to the end of your life, man. And like, like you're going to lay on that deathbed. And this is one of the things I love. You know, a bunch of people have said it. And this is one of the things that I've loved, right? You're on your, your deathbed and you're laying there and someone walks into the room and it's the person you could have been. And the thing is, they're probably even not dying yet because they're a healthier version of you because they made the right choices. Yeah. Um, they defaulted. Uh, but with this, they've done all the things that you should have done. They had the, they've got this aura about them. You're like, dude, like this person inspires me just from being in that room. And we know people like that. Mm. Okay, just by talking to them, they lift you up. That's them. They have the experiences that you want to have. They have the business that you want to have. They had the relationship that you want to have. They just made the choices. They, every single moment, like Abraham Maslow says, right? Like what one can be, one must be. What one can be, one must be. That person you're staring at while you're on your deathbed, they did that moment to moment to moment. There's 20,000 moments in a day. A th moment is a three second time span. Every moment they choose to be the better version of them. And you, you didn't even know there was a fucking choice. Mm. And that's the fucking sorry part, man. Like you weren't consciously aware that you could have so much greatness. And once you're aware of that, you're like, dude, structure my day. Pull back that bow. Let go of that arrow. Come on obstacles. Get me to greatness. I think if we, man, if we treat life like, life like this, it's like this pandemic, dude, like, come on, like, this is a training ground for fucking warriors. I feel like we overcomplicate it. Hey, like it's just, like you said, it's just like, wake up. Have you got the target to aim your arrow at? If you don't like takes, cause some people like that. I don't know what goal to set. And this is like, where I love what you say. It's just like, you can do anything. Like don't set a goal of like, Oh, I'd love to lose two and a half kilos or I'd love to, you know, like go on a holiday next year. It's like, no, that's really shitty targets to set, right? But dude, like, like you, your target should inspire you, okay? So it's like, if you want to have a house, have a house, you're like, oh, I want to have this like house. It's like, no, like, tell me what it feels like when you walk into that house. Tell me what it looks like. Like, what are the emotions that you feel when you walk into it? Like, that's a goal. If you mm. can smell it, you can see it, you can feel it, you have emotions from it. It's like, dude, like, you're getting your senses into that shit, okay? What do other people look Okay, how do you, like that, these are goals and they, they, these goals inspire you. Like lose four kilos or lose two kilos. It's like, dude, okay, great, go have a shit. Right, like, 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 like they aren't goals, they aren't specific, they aren't inspiring, they don't push you. And this is not, that's okay. If your goal is to lose two kilos, awesome. You're not tapping into your potential and that's okay. Mm. Because you can, like hold those limitations as long as you want to keep them right. But when you're ready to let like, go of the limitations that you're placing on yourself, like, dude, the world is at your fucking beck and call. I think that's how you, you're like, dude, like I'm ready to wake up. TJ just confronted me. I'm stepping up to the world right now. You know, he's throwing a pitch. I'm going to knock it out of the park. You just got to step up to the plate guys. Yep. Right. Like setting shitty goals. You're still sitting in the fucking dugout. When you first talked about like the, yeah, like setting those big lofty goals, but then also making sure not to fall into that anxiety. I think it's, it's pretty simple guys. It's like, yeah, set a goal that is lofty and inspires the fuck out of you. But then also it's like, that can be a long-term goal. Like maybe you're not going to like buy your mansion, you know, like this year or, you know, feed, feed Africa or all starving children, whatever your goals are. But 
have that goal in mind, but then you've also got like the first step of that goal, which is like, it's first step. It's not too far away. That makes you feel like uh, it gives you anxiety because you just don't even know how to achieve it. But you know that it's, it's the first step on the way to that lofty goal. And it still needs to be inspiring, you know? So, and again, like set that target to be whatever the fuck you want it to be. Make it, make it inspiring. But then that you gotta go, okay, what's first? What's going to be the first checkpoint where once I achieve it, I can take my wife out to dinner and we can like cheers some champagne and go, that, that was fucking awesome. We haven't reached our long-term goal, but like we've ticked off the first bit and this is- It could be like five more clients. Like, yeah. If you get five more clients, so you grab five clients every month for 12 months, dude, like 60 more clients. Most yeah. people just lack fucking consistency. Show up one month, don't show up until fucking June next year. And that's the problem. Like you don't have consistency living at your best self. Because you don't even know what your best self is. Write it down. Look at it. Heroic version of me. It looks like I'm like I've been stabbed in the hands right now for my workout. Um, heroic version of me. Not heroic victim version of me. Moment to moment. Who am I going to choose? How do they act? What emotions do they choose? How do they show up in the world? Dude, like you can't be a victim one month and be a hero the next month. Mm -hmm. You can't blame people from your circumstance. Everything great up until this moment is your fault and everything bad up until this moment is your fault. The world happens for you, not to you. Mm -hmm. Like this pandemic was the right thing. It got you to slow down, recalibrate, learn, get better at your craft. If you need to get better at your craft, like use it and push forward. Mm. Okay. Like, like what's the point in complaining? What's the point in blaming? Like no one cares about your shit. Mm. Okay. Like they don't, and you're not inspiring anyone. And like, we're on this earth. Like, and there's enough people that think life sucks. So you may as well think it's good and lift a couple of, a couple of people up with you. Right? Like, Please, if you're in the fitness industry listening to this, like that's your whole goal is to make people feel better about themselves, feel good, lose weight, lift heavy things. Like, dude, like that, that's it. Just make them feel fantastic. And if you don't feel fantastic, like fitness, it's a transfer of energy. Like if I meet you, we have a transfer of energy. Like you need to live with intent. And like, I feel like so many of us are walking through our lives as zombies, mm, having sorry. no intent, no intent to the sales call, no intent to the day, no intent to how I take my training session. Like, dude, like I'm taking Zoom classes for RBT. I've got like 75 coaches. I love coaching. I'm like, yes, it's at a time slot. I can start coaching again. Well, I'm not above coaching. I love coach. I'm a coach, right? I love the ability to make people smile and push them. And go, wow, I did more than I could do. So I'm taking these classes. And every single time, like I'm doing, we always doing two. It's like, this is me. Okay, before a class, I'm I, like, I ask myself a question. I'm like, are you, are, you, are, you in the, are you in the groove? Are you in your mojo? So I ask myself three questions. And I'm like jumping up and down. And I just, I want to get my blood flowing. Because I need like motion creates emotion, right? So I get my blood flowing. I'm like, and I keep asking myself, are you in the mood? Are you in the mood? Are you in the mood? I keep asking myself until I say yes. That's like fantastic. And then I say to myself, if this is someone's first session, make it their best session. If this is someone's last session, make it their best session. Okay. And it's like, I don't do sessions just to pass 45 minutes. It's not like, oh, let's just, I'm not like training people. As I can't wait till my coffee in an hour and a half. Because I know this 45 minutes, if someone's giving me their time, they'll never get back. I better make it count for them. I need to make an experience. Every conversation like I have with you, right? Like there has to be an outcome for that because I want you to leave it feeling good. It's not, we don't just pass, like, like what's the point of passing the time having a chat yeah. without an emotion attached? Like shit, like I'll go watch some Netflix if I just want to be bored and lay on the, on the bed, right? Like, like you don't do things without a reason. I don't get up on a Monday unless I know what I'm doing. So it's like structure your day. Okay, this, I've got our sales calls. If you don't have sales calls from nine to 10, you've got 30 sales calls. I'm going to do 30 dials. That's the intent. Now, if someone picks up, I'm going to change their life. That's the intent. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't just say, you don't just put in your diary, I've got a training session, right? You don't just put in your diary, sales calls. Like it has to be an outcome. That means you're living with intent in that moment. 
and you know what you're trying to achieve. And if you can do that, you show up in a completely different way. Well, everything, all the goals that you're setting, like whether it's financial or uh, fitness or weight loss or whatever, you got to remember that you're setting those goals because you think it'll make you feel a certain way. So if we know that that's the outcome, we know that, okay, I want to make a million dollars in my business because that'll feel fucking awesome. I'll feel powerful. I'll feel whatever, whatever it'll make you feel. Well, every day right now, you have the choice to feel something. You can feel uninspired going through the motions or all that sort of stuff. Or you can feel fucking awesome. You can feel on fire. And like what you said, your attitude and your effort are the only things that you can control. So even though you might not feel like you know, going above and beyond in that session or something or doing the sales call because I hate it, well, it's like, remember why you're doing it all in the first place. You're doing it because you want to get an end emotion. Well, you can start getting that end emotion right now. Dude, you're doing it because it's like discipline. It's like that's what, you know, Jocko will like discipline equals freedom. Mm. You do shit when it's hard. Because if you do shit when it's hard, when it's easy, dude, it's effortless. Like I think that's what everyone wants to do. Guys, if you want to help you get your business growing, like go to fitproformula.com. Like we guarantee 30 clients in 12 weeks. Um, that's a guarantee. Money back. Um, or we'll work with you until you do. Either way, guys, like we help you grow your business and get success. And that's on fitproformula.com. Liam, you got anything to finish up, mate? No, man. I think just if everyone can just wake up tomorrow and pull back that arrow and make sure it's on target and then just know that I'm going to launch this arrow with 10 out of 10 attitude and 10 out of 10 effort. And oh, that's if what you, you don't, do. then you wake up the next day and try again. Cheese. Okay, guys, that is the Travis Jones Show. Peace out.